for food and water, this pack weighs only eight pounds. It's the lightest base weight that I've ever had, but I also didn't make any sacrifices in order to still be safe and comfortable while out on trips. Starting with the pack, we have the Mountain Smith Zerk 40 pack. And there's a few different reasons why this is my favorite go-to ultralight pack. First of all, it's ultralight because it doesn't have a hip belt, doesn't have a frame, and has pretty low capacity at 40 liters. But while it doesn't have a frame, it still carries weight phenomenally. I've had over 30 pounds in this while I was doing an eight day food carry on the Great Divide Trail, and it carried that weight really well. The reason for that is that instead of traditional shoulder straps, like you'd see it on a lot of other packs, it has running vest style shoulder straps. And these straps really help when you're carrying heavy loads and distributing that load. It also has really accessible side pockets for water bottles. I don't have any problems with my little short T-Rex arms, reaching back, grabbing my water bottle, and then also putting it back. And then you'll notice on each side of the water bottle pockets, there's an extra second stretchy mesh pocket. And I use those pockets in order to store snacks on one side, and then once I'm finished with those snacks, I'll store the garbage on the other side. So I don't need to be stopping throughout the day in order to access my food, my water, my snacks, as well as all the stuff that I keep in the shoulder pockets. You'll notice that I'm using smart water bottles for my water bottles. They're light, durable, and the narrow kind of profile of them makes it really easy to slide them in and out of the water bottle pockets. I add these smart caps to them in order to just make drinking a little bit easier. I find that one smart water bottle will last me for weeks and weeks on trail. So I really like that I'm not having to buy a new water bottle for every trip. On the front left shoulder strap of my pack, I have my Garmin inReach. So this is a satellite SOS communication device. I use this in order to check in with loved ones at home, keep in touch with them, as well as if I get into an emergency, I can use the SOS feature in order to call for help. On the right side, I have some hygiene items. In the one pocket, I have some sunscreen, and then I also have SPF lip chap. It's important to wear sunscreen, even though I wear a long sleeve shirt and long pants while I'm hiking, I still need to put sunscreen on my nose because that's an area that's not protected. And then my lips are also not protected, so that's why I have SPF lip chap. In the second pouch on the same shoulders, I also keep my toothbrush and my toothpaste tabs. I picked this little tip up from Jupiter Hikes, and I really enjoyed it while I was on the Great Divide Trail because I was able to easily access my toothbrush and toothpaste tabs and brush my teeth over that first little bit of trail. I personally really like toothpaste tabs because I can ration exactly how many I need for the course of a trip. If I'm going on a weekend or trip that I only need a handful of toothpaste tabs, where if I'm going on a week or a month long trip, then I can allocate the amount that I need accordingly. The Zerk 40 also has a really big stretchy front pocket and I keep a bunch of items in here. So I have my poop kit, first of all, and in my poop kit, which is made by Space Bear Bags, I have my trowel. This is the Bogler Coal trowel. And I really like this because it's 13.5 grams, so very lightweight. It also has serrated edges, so it cuts through roots well. And then it's really durable at the same time and has good ergonomics. So definitely my favorite ultralight trowel at this time. And then I also have my toilet paper. I'm pretty OCD with my toilet paper. I'll allocate the exact amount that I need for each day, which consists of three squares per wipe and then three wipes per poop. I keep wet wipes in here as well, just for a little extra cleanup after a poop. And then I have hand sanitizer and then soap. Soap is really much better than hand sanitizer for making sure your hands are clean. And then I'll also use this to give myself a little bath if I'm getting really dirty while out on a trip. I also keep my water filter in this front pocket for easy access. I use the Platypus Quick Draw. I've used almost every filter out there from brands like Sawyer, Catadyne, Life Straw, and then Platypus. And I found that the Platypus Quick Draw is the best option out there, even after hundreds of liters of water. It's the only one that hasn't significantly slowed down on me. There's two more things that I keep in this front pocket. First of all, my first aid kit. I keep things like bandages for blisters, drugs, as well as a repair kit in here, just in case I need them while I'm out on trail. I also have my rain jacket, again, for easy access in this front pocket. This is the Visp rain jacket. I found this jacket to be awesome. It's waterproof. It's more durable than frog togs, which is a good affordable option if you're looking for something less expensive. It also has mechanical pit zips. And I found that I've been really liking the packability as well. Compared to frog togs, this packs up about to the size of a baseball, which means it takes up a lot less room inside of your pack. If you're looking at the Zerk 40 and thinking that a pack without a hip belt is not for you, then check out the Gossamer Gear Mariposa. I've been putting this pack through its paces and really like it as an ultralight pack that also has a hip belt. That hip belt is removable along with the frame if you want to try going frameless and without a hip belt down the road. And it also has really good water bottle pockets. It's surprising how many packs don't have water bottle pockets that are easy to access, but the Mariposa and Zerk 40 are two that do. Now that we're done looking at what I keep on the outside of my pack for easy access throughout the day, we can dive into what is on the inside of the pack and what I use around camp. Right at the top here, I have my food kit. So this is just in a Hilltop Packs 
Dyneema bag. If I'm in bear country, then I'll use an Ursac, but on the last trip where I used this kit, I had access to bear lockers. And in my food bag, I cook, keep my food. So this is just an extra meal, a little ramen bomb. I have my pink titanium spoon, which I use for eating my meals. And then I have my cook kit. So my cook kit consists of a Toke 650 milliliter titanium pot, only weighs 80 grams, so it's super lightweight. It has more than enough capacity for me, and I'm able to fit all of my stuff inside of here. So inside the pot, I have my fuel canister, as well as a mini Bic lighter, and then the BRS 3000 stove. The BRS 3000 stove is just the gift that keeps on giving. It only weighs 25 grams and has never failed me on a trip. It boils water relatively fast. It's just a generally effective stove that's lightweight and also very affordable. I keep my ditty bag right at the top here as well. This is just a little Napax ditty bag. And in here, I keep a bunch of little ditties. First of all, I have the Nightcore NB5000 battery bank. I find that 5,000 is good enough for three to four days of trail for me if I'm taking lots of pictures and using my phone as well as my inReach and watch. If I'm going for a week or longer, then I'll bring the 10,000 milliamp version of this battery. I also have all the cables that I need in order to charge my devices. And then I have more little ditties. I have earplugs, lip chap, some drugs, as well as some caffeine pills and my daily drugs. And then I also have my flashlight in here. This is another new item for me for 2022 and another Jupiter Hikes recommendation. There's a lot of reasons I really like this flashlight. First of all, it has a little clip on it so I can clip onto my head. It has a lot of lumen, 650 lumen. It's USB rechargeable, glows in the dark so it's really easy to find inside of my tent. To top it all off, it only weighs 14 grams, so less than half the weight of my headlamp, the Nightcore NU25. Next up is my tent, and this might just be the lightest fully enclosed tent that you can buy on the market. This is the z -Pax Plex Solo. The Plex Solo is different than the Altiplex I used on the Great Divide Trail in that in order to set it up, you can use a standard trekking pole, like this Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fiber two piece. The Plex Solo is also surprisingly roomy for a one person trekking pole tent. I have no problems hunkering down in here during a storm as well there's enough room that I can get changed inside the tent, store everything that I need and I can even kneel up and go pee into the vestibule if it's raining a lot and I don't want to get out of the tent. I like single trekking pole tents like the Plex Solo and the Altiplex because I carry two trekking poles when I'm hiking and with the tent only taking one trekking pole if one of my trekking poles breaks I can just use the other one instead of having to scrounge for branches and sticks in order to set up my tent. For stakes, I use MSR Groundhog stakes. I keep them in this all man's right holster sack. It has a nice wide opening on it so it's easy to access the stakes inside. And I use a combination of regular size groundhogs as well as groundhog minis. I use the regular size groundhogs on key points like the corners as well as the vestibule door and then the groundhog minis for all the tie outs and the extra stakeout points. If the Plex Solo is a little bit of your budget, then another option that's much more affordable that I highly recommend is the Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo. The Lunar Solo is made with Silpoly, which is an excellent material for a tent and is also super roomy, even roomier than the Plex Solo. And that takes us to the items that I want to keep dry. And in order to accomplish that, I use a Nilo Flume pack liner. This is essentially just a clear plastic bag that I put inside of my pack and then I twist it up and then tuck the end down the side of the pack in order to keep everything inside dry. And this is a very effective system. I backpacked for days in really heavy rain and everything inside the pack liner would stay dry. Right at the top here, I have my clothing and all my clothing is loose inside the pack. I have my camp socks. These are this darn tough merino wool socks. I have my sweater. So this is a Farpoint Alpha Direct fleece sweater. It's insane how lightweight this is for how warm it is. Alpha Direct is just a crazy material that provides a lot of loft in a very lightweight package. If it's really cold out on top of that sweater, I'll put the Patagonia Ultra Alpine down sweater. This is one of the lightest down jackets or sweaters that you can get. It only weighs 150 grams. And that's because it doesn't have any frills. There's no zipper, pockets, or other little doodads. It's just a nice warm sweater that you can put on if you're getting cold. In order to insulate my legs, I have these really nice fleece pants from Decathlon. They're very affordable, but then also a nice warm, lightweight option. Couple more items for my head. I have a buff if it gets really cold, and then I have a merino wool toque. And that takes us to my sleep system. I have the regular width, Thermarest x Lite sleeping pad. And while I generally enjoy wide width sleeping pads more, I find them a bit more comfortable. I've been using regular width a bit more often recently and I'm not finding them too bad, especially if I wanna be dropping weight and going ultralight, I'm probably gonna be getting a good night's sleep either way because I'm putting in miles. For my pillow, and yes, I have a pillow in my ultralight gear loadout. I'm bringing the Trekology 2.0. I wish there was something as comfortable with a pad strap that was more lightweight, but this is the best option that I've been able to find so far. And then the last item is my quilt. 
This is the Enlightened Equipment Enigma quilt. This is a 20 degree quilt and is made with super lightweight materials. 950 power fill down and then 70 year shell fabric on the outer and inner sides. The use of super lightweight materials is really noticeable with how lightweight and compactable this quilt is, but it also has some drawbacks. The 950 power fold down is not gonna keep its loft as well as a lower power fold down once you get into wet and humid conditions. Go check out this video if you wanna see my full review of the Z-Pax Plex Solo Tent. I go over all the pros and cons of the tent, including the benefits and drawbacks of Dyneema Composite Fabric, as well as the benefits and drawbacks of a single trekking pole tent.